All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Mind Body Blend for Functional Posture. What we're working on this month in May of 2024 is keeping our posture while we're doing functional activities in life. And one thing that we do a lot of is reaching down, picking something up where your body's kind of in this angle. We have flexion at the hips. And a lot of times what we do is lose our posture and round forward. So we're going to be working on a sequence of movements that's going to help us to continue to activate the muscles of our upper back so that we're not drawing around and collapsing here, but we're using the muscles right between the shoulder blades to keep the shoulders back, to keep the abdominals scooped in, and of course to work on a little bit of balance. But let's warm up to get started. I have two light hand weights, one heavy hand weight, and we'll take our feet in um, our wide Wu Chi. We haven't done any Tai Chi for a while. So I just want you to turn your toes out, bend your knees a little bit, sink down into your legs and find your abdominals connected here, your shoulders drawn down and back, and then keep your head level. So we're not going down and up like a squat. So you're gonna keep it level as you just shift your body weight to the right foot and then to the left. And then we're going to do this with our, our arms in some different positions. The first position is just put your hands on your hips and pull your elbows back to try to point to the wall that's behind you. And then we're going to move the arms slightly toward the front and to the back. So basically what I'm doing is just a little bit of rotation of the humerus into that forward position and then retracting it back. But when you bring your arms forward, try not to increase the space between your shoulder blades. So I still want your shoulder blades to be securely back and you're just moving the arm bones. Good, let's do one more of those. Keep going with the legs, bring the arms down by your side, turn your palms to face the back, and then we'll push behind and release down. Push behind, down. And you're just finding a pain-free range of motion with this. It doesn't have to be really big to open up your chest and to feel that nice stretch and to maintain good posture. And we're doing this really mindfully. So when you press back, even though we don't have weights or any external workload, you should feel your muscles starting to fatigue just a tiny bit. Let's do two more of these. Beautiful. Okay, bring the elbows to 90 degrees here right in front of you. And we are going to rotate and then cross the abdominal. And each time you cross, switch the hand that's on the top. And my elbows aren't going away from my body. I'm just keeping them right next to my side waist. Good. Shoulder blades are really stable here, so we're not moving the shoulder blades open and close, just the arm bones. Try to increase the length of your neck so your chin is level with the floor, or with the floor, yes, and eyes are on the horizon. Good. Okay, next one, come here. Keep your shoulder blades down. Now, depending on your shoulders and range of motion, we're just going to lift and pull down forcefully. So I'm pulling the back of my shoulder blades together, pulling the elbows down and slightly behind my body. Good, if your legs are getting tired from this movement, you can make some adjustments or just rest and keep the arms going. Make sure you're breathing. You still have that abdominal connection. 
and two more. Pull down. Nice, one more. Keep the legs going. And we'll start to come into cloud hands. So one arm comes across and then the other. And then they start to move at the same time. So as one's coming across, the other one's coming underneath. And start to rotate your body all the way to look at the side wall. Maybe slowing this movement down. Just a couple more each direction. And then just come back to center. We'll take the palms, flip them so your fingers are up, elbows are in. As you bend your knees to come into a squat, push the arms forward, but try not to let your shoulder blades come up. So push, but keep your shoulder blades down. Then turn your palms, make a fist, and pull back. And we push and pull. And I want you to create imaginary resistance. So you're pushing against a really heavy object, and then we're pulling back. I like the exhale on the push and then the inhale on the pull because I can really expand the chest as the elbows are coming back. Breathe out, breathe in. Reconnect with those shoulder blades. Make sure they're staying down and slightly drawn in towards each other. And take it down into your push and hold. Now you can stay as low as you want to your legs, just a small bend or a deep bend. Arms are out in front of you and I want you to keep your shoulder blades back. And we're going to practice looking down with just our eyes and then looking back forward. Look down just with your eyes and look forward. So when we go for a walk, sometimes we are looking down at where we're going, at the ground in front of us. And I want you to train yourself not to look down with your head, but to look down with your eyes. Good, three more eye movements, down and neutral. Shoulder blades are still back, two more down and neutral. One more down, neutral and press up. Take a nice big inhale, drop the right arm, side bend, exhale, hold a couple breaths. So my gymnastics coach when I was young and learning skills told me something that's remained with me throughout the years. And that is where your head goes, the rest of your body will follow. Let's bring that up and go to the other side. So when I was learning different stunts, I would initiate my head movement first and then my body would, would do that action. And come up and down. So for instance, when you drop your chin and you look down at the ground, then the rest of your body is going to follow. And it might not be that exaggerated. When you look up, then you can extend your body the opposite direction. When you look one way, you can turn that way. When you look the other way, you can turn that way. So I want you to think about where your head is. That's going to partially dictate our body position. So what we're going to do is a little bit of balance here. I want you to step forward onto your right foot. You'll strike with the heel. Bend your knees down. Hinge your hip, your upper body forward. Come back up with your upper body. Rise with your legs and then step back in. I'm going to do that on the left side. So you'll step forward. You'll bend your knees. Take your upper body with a straight back hinge, come back up, 
rise through your legs and step in. One more on each side. So we strike the right foot, we bend the knees, we hinge forward, rise up, push, step in. Left foot steps, bend the knees, hinge forward, rise up, stand, and step in. So now I want you to bring your arms like this, pull your shoulder blades down like you're doing that initial movement that we did. And we'll take a step forward with the right foot, bend your knees, hinge your body forward, come back up, stand, step in. On the left, strike, bend your knees, hinge, Come up with the chest, stand up, and step in. Now I'm gonna add a twist. Arms are still here. We're step forward right, bend your knees, hinge forward, and then you're turning your right left elbow to the floor, your right elbow up. So we're gonna turn toward the right side, come back to the middle, Lift your chest up, push up through your legs, step in. I know it's a lot of movements, just go slow. And we'll step forward left. Bend your knees, hinge forward, twist to the left. So your left elbow's coming up, your right elbow's coming down. Come back to the center, lift your chest, stand up. Step in, relax your arms. Now, if you'd like to add light weights with this, I've got three pounders. If you don't want to do any weights, that's okay because you're still getting a lot of work just with their, your arms in that position. So when we do the knee bend, the hinge forward, the twist, it changes where the workload is for us. So we'll start here. Now this movement doesn't change, so no matter whether we're bending our knees, whether we're hinging, whether we're twisting, this stays perfectly stable. So let's lift up the right foot, step, bend your knees down, hinge forward, twist right, come back to middle, lift your chest, stand up, step in, and then relax your arms. So when we have weights, each time we do it, we'll be taking a little bit of a break. So back up to our position. Take a step forward with your left foot, strike your heel, bend your knees. So both of them bend. We hinge forward, twist left. Left shoulder's coming up. Come back to the middle. Lift your chest up. Stand up. Step in, close your arms down. We'll do one more of each of those on each side. So let's go in position, step forward right, strike your heel, bend both knees down, hinge, flat back, twist right, exhale. Back to neutral, lift the chest up, push up through your legs, Step in, release your arms. Boy, three pounds is feeling really heavy right about now. Back to position. Step forward with your left foot. Bend both knees. Hinge forward like you were going to pick something up. Twist left. Center. Lift your chest. Stand up. Step in and release down. Okay, same sequence, different position with the arms. So I want your palms to face the back wall and you're going to pull your arms back a little bit. So they're in maybe about this position, squeeze your shoulder blades and we're going to do that whole sequence. You might wanna set your weights down on the first one just to see how you do. So let's step forward right, bend both knees, hinge and your arms are gonna go with you, right? Now we're twisting to the right side. Whoa, 
It really makes a difference with the arms in this position and with the weights. Come back to center. Lift the chest up. Stand up through the legs. Step in and then relax your arms down. All right, where your head goes, the body follows. So when we twist, I want you to make sure you're turning your head, but if you're losing your balance, you don't have to. You can keep your head looking more neutral. Okay, arms back. Step forward left. Bend your knees. Now keep your arms moving back as you hinge forward. Twist left. Neutral. Lift your chest. Stand up. Step together. Relax arms. Lots of triceps and the back of shoulders in that. Okay, one more time on each side with or without weights. The arms go back first. Hold them. Take a step forward with your right foot. Bend both knees. Hinge forward. Twist right, center, chest comes up, stand up, step in, arms release. One more time, push back, hold it. Step forward, left, go slow, bend both knees, down, hinge, twist left, Center, lift the chest, straighten the legs, step together, relax the arms. Wow, how do we do with that? Do a couple shoulder rolls. Okay, so set your weights down for a moment. I'm gonna give you another step with your feet. It's gonna involve balance and a very functional exercise. Now we don't always step forward when we're doing something functional. Sometimes we have to go off on a side angle. So I want you to step slightly to your right. Step your left foot in and tap your toe or you can cross behind. Bend your knees a little bit. Come up. Step out to the left and then shift your body weight there. You can either leave your big toe to the floor or you can lift your leg up. So we step right, tap the toe or cross behind, bend your knees. This is a curtsy squat. Come up, step out, either leave your big toe to the floor or let your leg raise. Let's do it one more time just with the feet. Step right, tap either here or behind, Bend your knees, come up, shift, and lift. Okay, let's add some arms. So as we step, push your arms back, come up, step, bring your arms forward. Shoulder blades stay really nice and isolated onto your back especially when we do the reach forward. Make sure you don't let your shoulder blades come up. Now, when you reach the arms forward, you can even go higher if it feels okay for your arms, like you're putting luggage in the overhead bin on a plane. Okay, you guys ready to try some weight? So what I'm gonna do, take my two light ones, and you, again, you can keep going without weights for this and just do the lower body is fine. So we'll step off to that right side. Either step in or cross behind. Keep your chest up as we push the arms back. So I'm not leaning forward on this one. Nice and upright. Step out. Bring the arms forward any amount. Option to lift the leg up. Squeeze your glute. Let's do five of these. Cross, lift, step out, and maybe you're looking straight out that direction your arms are up. If you want to see the floor, you're just moving your eyeballs, not your head. So I don't want you to look down and go, okay, where's the floor? 
I see it and losing your form. So head is up. Two more, step out, cross or tap, lift. Step out, maybe you're coming up a little higher if it feels okay for your shoulders. One more, balance, control, posture, stability. And back to center. Okay, if you wanna do weights on the other side right away, go ahead and keep them. But I'm gonna rest my arms a little bit and just demonstrate the legs on the other side because our brain has to reverse. So now we start by stepping off to the left of our foot slightly turned out. We're going to tap this right foot or cross behind, bend the knees, a little curtsy squat, come up, step out, turn your chest that direction of your foot, keep the toe tapped or lift the leg up. Step out, tap or cross back, curtsy, up, Step. Now, if you need to do this with a wall in front of you so you have a little something for your fingertips, that's great as well. Okay, I'm going to start the arm movements without the weights first. So, as we step left, tap or curtsy, we push back. Comfortable range of motion. Step out, lift forward. Step. Nice job. I'm gonna do one more without weights and I'll collect them up. And we'll do five more with your option to add weights. All right, now when I lift it up, I had my palms down, but you can also turn your palms in or even up. Sometimes that feels better for your shoulder so you don't have any impingement of the rotator cuff. So for those of you that have rotator cuff injuries and issues, you might wanna turn the palms in. Okay, with our weights, palms back. We'll step out to the left, tap in or cross back push behind you, keep your chest up, step out right, and here's where you can turn your palms in or even up if that's better on the shoulders. Good, we have four more. And really, it seems counterintuitive, but going slower can be harder. It takes a lot more muscle control than if we were ramping up the pace and doing this really fast. So you might be saying, oh, I could get maybe eight reps in if I did this quicker, but I want you to go slow. There's three, two more. Squeeze those shoulder blades back. And then as you lift the arms, keep the shoulder blades back. It's easier said than done. One more. and then relax. Great job. Okay, I have one heavy weight or you can hold on to two light ones in one hand. Sometimes that's a little difficult, but this is a strong muscle group. It's our pulling muscle group. So I'm gonna put that large weight into my left hand and we're gonna go back to something we did earlier in class. So what you're gonna do is step forward, bend your knees, hinge forward like you're going to pick something up off the floor, and we're going to stay in this position and pull 10 times. When you bring this left arm up, reach your right arm out, and then pull your right arm back. Nine. Now, could I do this with two weights? Yes but a lot of times we're lifting something up with one arm and we need to use our core here. 
So that's why we're doing the single side. I think we got about five more. And you'll notice nothing's moving in my body except for the arm pulling and my torso rotating. Four. Look out ahead of you, maybe six to eight feet. Three, so you're not looking at your feet. Two. One. Then we come up with the chest, straighten and step back. So now I wanna do this just on this side, moving with one rep per movement. So we'll stay on the left side, we'll step forward, hinge, pull, straighten, and then step yourself back in. Step forward, reach, pull, and step in. Good, what's a good number for these? I heard somebody say eight. <laughs> There's three. Good. Four. So of course you've got a little bit more weight in your front foot, but you're distributed in a split stance. Five. Step. Six. Two more. Stepping back in each time gives us that element of balance because we have to shift our body weight. One more. Strike, reach, pull, and step in. Now, I wasn't even thinking about it, but I wasn't moving my head. I was looking at the computer screen. I guess I was checking my form. But let's stay on this side. If you want, let's do three more. And when you pull, look to the left. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit more challenge with balance. So we'll step, look, and up. Two more. Look. Oh yeah, that changes it. One more. And step in. Okay, we have to do the same thing on the other side. So no looking on the first eight. I'm just kidding, you can look if you want, but I'm gonna do that are looking straight forward on the first few. So the first one we're gonna do, right hand, step forward with your left foot, bend your knees a little bit, hinge forward, reach down, and we've got 10 pulls. So we go one. And you can look on this one too if you want. Two. I'll do a few with looking to the right. Three. Four. Ooh, I'm working up a little bit of sweat here. Five. Must be a humid day. Six. Seven. I should give myself some credit, though, for burning some calories. Eight. Not blame it on humidity. Nine. Ten. And we come up and we step back in. All right, I'm feeling a little bit more challenged on this side with my balance. Maybe it's the knee replacement. Maybe it's the hip that needs replaced. Maybe it's my brain. Okay, so we're gonna do them one at a time. So we step, pull, step back in, one. We have eight. So I'm reaching down opposite. That's functional movement, right? Usually when we step forward with the left foot, the right arm swings forward when we're striding. Three. And remember, you can add the look to the left, so that's going to challenge your balance more. Four. So we did 11 on the other side. We did eight. 
And then I threw in three more. Five. Six. Remember, if you're not turning your head, I still want you to only look down with your eyes. Nice job. We have four more. Step. Nice job. Three. Two to go, opposites, rotate, one more, and come in center, set that weight down, excellent. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of a standing snow angel. What I want you to do is take your arms slightly behind your body and then move them up as high as you can through a pain-free range of motion and then come down. Now for your shoulders, you want to be here more forward and coming right in here. This is good. So I want you to find your pain-free range. Sometimes we have to bend our knees when our arms are up to stabilize. So as we do our snow angel movement, we'll come down into the legs and try not to adjust your body to come forward. I want you to keep it up and lift. So this is more like a plie in ballet. A squat, we're going to let our chest come forward. A plie, we're going to go straight down. I'm starting to feel that in my right shoulder a little bit, so I'm going to adjust, not go quite as big. Nice, everybody. One more. And press up and lowering down. Okay, we're coming to our hands and knees. You need one lighter weight with you. Working one side in spinal balance. I've got my little padding for my knees. So that one little weight's gonna go off to your right side as you come down onto the mat. All right, so we're hands and knees. Nice, balanced, all fours position. If coming to your knees is difficult, you can do hands and feet with your hands on a chair for this. So let's bring that weight into the right hand. And we're going to bring our elbow up just about level with the floor. We'll straighten the arm. We'll lift and lower it. Then we'll open it to the side and pull it in and then bend. So we straighten one, lift and lower two, open, close three, bend four. Good, straighten one, lift and lower two, open, close three, bend four. Let's relax for a moment. So if any of those pieces don't, doesn't work for you, don't work, it's not good English. For instance, if the open close is a no-go, just leave that piece out and do what you can. Now we're going to add spinal balance. So your left leg goes back. We level off the pelvis and let's start the sequence. So we lift one, straighten, up and down, out and in, bend. Good. We have five of these, so four more. Straighten, lift lower, open, close, bend. Three more. Make sure you're breathing. Wherever you want to breathe is fine. There's no right or wrong way. Two more. Up and down, 
out and in, bend. One more, straighten, up, down, out, in, and bend, and set the weight down. All right, I don't know about you, but my left wrist needs a little bit of a stretch, so you can come maybe down to your elbows, stretch those wrists, roll them around a couple times. While you're doing that, I'm going to turn to face the other direction so you can see that left arm. And without weights is great for this. It's glorious. You don't need to use weights. Okay, let's do three of them on all threes. Okay, so left arm comes up. We straighten. Pause for a little second there. Lift and lower. Out and in. And bend. Two more. And being on all threes is still a core exercise, even though we don't have that leg back. Two more. It's a little bit different work in our core. One more. And bend. Okay, now our right leg's gonna go back. So we're on opposites on the mat. Get your, your uh, spine neutral and your pelvis neutral, so try not to be twisted. And we've got five reps. Elbow is up, straighten the arm, lift and lower, open close, bend. Four more, straighten, lift lower, Open, close, bend. Maybe you say, I could do this, but I need to be down on my elbow. It still works, so we straighten. Lift lower, open, close, bend. Two more. Whatever range of motion suits you, with or without weights, leaving out any section, Maybe adding something different in there. Here's your last one. And bend. Set that weight down. Give yourself a stretch. Maybe a little child's pose might feel nice for your arms and your shoulders and your back. Little wrist stretch, perhaps. Okay, so we've got that single weight still with us. We've got a sequence now laying on our back. So take a moment, get yourself in that position, nice and comfortable. If you need a pillow for your head a little bit to keep your spine neutral, have that available. If your low back hurts to be laying on your back, you might prop your feet up on a chair. I don't have one out with me today, but you could prop your feet up so that you're in this position. Other options, feet are flat on the floor, or if you really want to challenge your core, your knees are up in tabletop. If this gets tiring to your hip flexors, your core, or your back muscles, here's a little trick. You can cross your ankles and you can allow your knees to open out. Then you can push your low back down into the floor and curl your tailbone up a little bit. So that's a nice trick. We use it in Pilates Reformer. If you do that, then just at some point, alternate the cross of the ankle and do it the other way. Maybe when you switch hands. Okay, so let's take that weight into your right hand. And then we're going to lift it straight up. We'll bend the elbow so the weight's gonna come right next to your ear. Then we straighten it. Then we lower that straight arm down to about to our hip. We lift it back up and then we're going to open and close. So we come out to the side and up. So there's three exercises: bend and straighten, lower and lift, open and close. So just a reminder, if any of those pieces doesn't suit your body, you just do the ones that work for you. Maybe you're just bending and straightening and that's all you're doing. And that's fine. Okay, so if your feet are on the floor and you want to try this with knees up, 
Let's do that same sequence, bend and straighten. And for more core, don't touch this left hand to the floor. Maybe put it on your abdomen. And when you go open and close, you're going to feel your body wants to tip that way. That's when your core really has to fire. Now, you know, I love levels. So one more option is your left leg is extended out long through the sequence. So let's do three more. Bend and straighten. Lower and lift. You can even lower the leg. Open, close. Two more. Tricep exercise, followed by a shoulder exercise, followed by a pectoral and a shoulder exercise. One more time. Make sure you're putting the foot down on the floor if you need to. and open and close and relax. Okay, switching the hand weight. And this could be a different ball game on this side. I want you to do what you can on each arm. They, they are probably not gonna be equal. So let's try it here. We bend and straighten, lower and lift. And go slow when you're lowering. That's when you're resisting the pull of gravity then open and close. Now sometimes I'm going to pause here for a moment and show you what I sometimes see that's not correct on the open and close. I see people's arm going way up here. It, you want to keep that arm right just below your chest when it comes out to the side. So be mindful of that. Okay, bend and straighten. Lower and lift. Make sure you don't lift up past your shoulder, right about here, then open and close. Now we can start to add the different options and levels for our core. So the first one, we can have one or both knees up off the floor. Remember that trick with crossing your ankles. Bend and straighten. Lower lift, open, close. And then we can extend this right leg long to really challenge the abs. Then straighten, lower lift, open, close. Let's try two more. We might got an extra on this side, not sure. It's good not to get all wrapped up into numbers anyway, which I sometimes do. Last one. All right, relax down and release the weight right next to your side. Good job. Okay, take your feet about hips distance apart, your knees hip distance apart as well, and just start to do a little windshield wiper. So when your knees go to the right side, your left hip is going to lift off the floor. When your knees go to the left, your right hip lifts off the floor a little bit. But I want your shoulders not to move away from the mat, so they're going to stay nice and stable. If your shoulder starts to lift up off the floor, then your knees have gone too far. So you can kind of redo that range of motion. Then find your range with your knees off to the right. Shoulders are still squared. And we are going to do some abdominal crunches here. And you have an option to use your little hand weight and you're going to hold on to the ends and put it right by your forehead like it's a baseball cap right there. And then lift up and down. You can do this without a weight too and just put your hands there. And then we're going to add, as you crunch up, you've got the baseball cap, then you're going to reach it away, put the baseball cap back on, and take it down. Curl up, 
reach away and down, up, reach. Each time relax your head because your neck's going to start talking to you otherwise. Two. One more. Relax the head completely, release the weight down. Tip your knees all the way to the other side. So let your right hip come off the floor, but your right shoulder is still down. And we'll bring that baseball cap to the forehead, just the crunch first. And so what we're trying to do is lift the chest straight up to the ceiling, even though our pelvis is rotated. Exhale, coming up. Then we'll come up. Take the hat off, reach it out, put it back on, and come down. Four more. And if your neck is just really talking, you don't have to do this arm work. You can just support the back of your head with your fingertips. Nice. Two more. And one more. And relax down. Bring those knees back to center. Release the weight next to the sides of your body. And then we'll do some bridging. So feet are nice and flat. We'll engage the glutes. Lift the hips up as high as you can. Now this exercise is called the typewriter, which young people don't even know what we're talking about, right? <laughs> so you kind of envisioning when you type and then you hit the return thing, it comes down to the next line and then you type, you hit the return, it comes down to the next line. Kind of, kind of creating a little bit of a memory there for me when I was a secretary. So what we're going to do is keep this bridge up. You're going to go down with your right hip just a little bit. Then your left hip will meet it. Then you'll go down with your left hip a little bit and your right hip will meet it. Down with the right, meet the left, down with the left, meet the right, down right, meet with the left. So we're just going to keep doing this until finally our tushy touches the floor. Then we're going to take that typewriter and we're going to go up. And I have my fingers right here on my anterior superior iliac spines um, because then I can kind of feel that I'm doing this. So my right hip's going to come up a little bit. So my left one's still on the floor. Then my left one's going to meet the right. Both of them are off the floor now. My left one's going to come up the right one to meet, right one up, left one to meet. Keep going until you can't come up any higher. Good. So when you're doing this typewriter, you're not moving your knees willy nilly side to side. So it's just your knees are staying completely straight, but you've got this little bit of isolated movement in the pelvis. So let's start on the left this time. Go down with the left, meet with the right, down with the right, meet with the left, down left, meet right, keep going till you find the floor. And these are really teeny. So if you only got two of them done, you might have been making them a little bit too big. Okay, we've got one more typewriter going up. So we'll start on the left hip. It lifts up a little bit. Make sure your knees didn't turn. Your right hip is still down. Then bring the right to meet it. Right goes up. Left to meet. Left goes up. Right to meet. Right. Then when you get to that very top, hold it there. 
And what I want you to do is pick up the ball of your right foot. Oh, that's kind of hard. And then the left. You're going to do little ankle pumps in bridge. If you can't get your foot to come off the floor at all, maybe try walking your feet further away from you, and then you might be able to get them to come up. Let's go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, just roll down from your bridge with this straight position. Hug your knees up into your chest. So we're working the shin muscles, which are very important to keep them strong so that we don't stub our toe while we're walking and get something called foot drop where our foot just doesn't come up when we're taking a step. So now we're going to do it with the legs up. You can wrap your hands behind your legs or if you've got your yoga strap, you can pull it in here so you can keep your legs up. And now we're going to do them one at a time. Pull, pull, pull. And I'm focusing more on the pull down than I am the point, but you can do in both directions with some action for sure. I've been watching this with my knee replacement. And so on my non-surgical leg, I could see that muscle really defined when I would do my ankle pumps. But on my surgical leg, eh, there wasn't really anything there. Now I'm barely, I'm seeing a little something coming back. So uh, those muscles do return and get stronger after they've atrophied if we stick with it. Couple more on each foot. Nice job. Okay, let's take our hamstring stretch here. So we can keep one leg up, take the other leg down, either set your foot to the floor or you can slide it all the way out. You can use that yoga strap under the bottom of your foot if you want and extend the leg up. How are we doing on time? We're good. Jitsi's still rolling. Okay, I've got a little clock in front of me. Let's hold it here at this in your, and finding your edge for 60 seconds. Now you can add any variations during that 60 seconds. So you could open your leg out. You could bring it across for the IT band or just hold it right in the center. You could add some more ankle pumps here. And just breathe through that nice pain-free range of motion. Allow that muscle to relax and stretch. Good. We have 20 seconds. If you need a little bit more time there, you can take it. Otherwise, one more breath. And then take a moment to switch sides. You know, what's hardest for me on this one is this right hip that's getting really painful is to straighten my leg out there. But, okay, I'm going to back off on a little bit. I don't want it to be painful. Okay, one minute. Here we go. Just nice, slow, rhythmic breathing. Just maybe check in, see how your body's feeling after the exercises we did today, much different than usual. So you might be saying, well, you know, I don't really feel much in my muscles today, but then maybe in the next day or two, you'll go, oh, what was it that we did? Because it was a little bit different. And that's always wonderful for the mind as well. I think this class is called Mind Body Blend. I love to have those mindful movements, sequences that we can really